Hey everyone, welcome to Birds of a Feather. Today we're working on a mid-century modern sewing stool and it's going to be painted with Dixie Belle paint. I'm using this gorgeous peony color. But before we start, I'm taping off the legs so I don't get paint on the brass tips here. And I'm also going to use this Boss Primer um, which blocks odor stains and it stops bleed through. And I find with a lot of these older pieces, they um, sometimes do tend to bleed through so I don't want to take any chances. This particular one is clear but it does come in white and I believe also grey so that you can undercoat and not have to use as many top coats of your paint. I just want to show you that I have this on a Lazy Susan here so that I can rotate my work as I go. And one tip when you're taping off the legs is to just fold back the tape here on the end so that you can easily lift it and then unwind it when you're done. I find it really difficult sometimes to find the end and um, unstick that so that's just a tip. So let's get started. So I'm starting with the piece upside down and then when I finish the legs and this part I'll turn it right side up and I'll get underneath here, underneath the lip where the seat goes. I'm using my Dixie Belle mini angle brush here. find that swiping sideways is a good way to brush on. I find that I get consistent coverage that way. So that's one leg done. So I'm going to proceed with doing the rest of the legs in exactly the same way and turning my work as I go. So here again, I'm dipping in. And I'm just going to swipe back and forth to even it out. Now I'll apply a little bit more here. And again, I'm going to bring the brush back and forth to come around the curved legs here. I'm just making sure I have full coverage. And there you go. That is fully painted all the way around. And you can see how helpful it is to have a Lazy Susan. You have to excuse the noise. The um, brown paper is dragging on the table here. But it's just ideal for painting circular spindles or legs like this. Whoa. Okay, so don't do that. Don't grab your leg as you're turning your turntable. Grab the bottom. I just got fingerprints in this wet primer. So I'm just going to go over that. Okay, we're back on track. So again, when you're turning your turntable, come from the bottom. I'm going to get right into these corners. That's what I love about this mini angle brush. It really gets into those corners.
find that coming sideways on these pieces because this is rounded is the best course of action here. I'm gonna get into corner in a moment. make sure I don't have drips. I'm going to brush that. And again, getting into the corners here. So I'll start at one side again, and I think what I'll do is just get into the corner while I'm here. And then I'm just going to come right around that curved edge. And take some long strokes just to clean it up. Gonna clean up in the corner here. And make sure you take the time to get those drips. Try not to overwork it, because as it gets tacky, you will get brush strokes through it. Now just move around and eyeball and make sure you've caught all the drips that might be in these crevices here. sure to make note of the um, two of the legs that have been done first because what I did was I grabbed them and I flipped my piece over so I can get the top of this now. So it's now off of the Lazy Susan but this is a small enough area that I'm not going to have to turn it. So I'm just going to apply to the top here. Okay so that's it for the primer. Now this is actually a water-based finish, so I'm just going to take some soap and water to my brush and clean it out, and I'll be good to go with the paint. So this is going to dry, like I said, I'm just going to let it dry overnight. It's time to paint with our top coat, and I'm using this gorgeous peony color. I'm just going to mist my brush. This will require two coats. And I'm using the same method. I'm coming back and forth, but then I'm gonna finish with long strokes.
mist your brush as you go. Swiping the brush back and forth like this just gives you really good coverage on curves, such as spindles, chair legs. And again, I'm finishing off with long strokes. Now since I'm doing two coats, I'm not going to be too concerned if I still see some of the wood coming through because we will get perfect coverage on the second coat. So again, mist your brush as you go, dip into the paint, and then I'm going to go all the way around. I'm turning my work as I go so I can get all the way around the leg. And I'll finish with vertical strokes. Excuse the crunching of the paper, guys, but I just have a little bit of brown paper on this Lazy Susan just in case I get drips. And again, I'll mist, dip into the paint, and we'll come down and do the bottom. Now for the bottom, I like to push downward on the brush just to get right up against the bottom here. The brush gets too dry, just give it another mist, and that helps move the paint. Isn't this a gorgeous color, guys? Okay, I'm gonna finish the other two legs and I'll be back to flip this over and do around the edges here. So it's now dry enough to flip over and I'm going to apply paint around this edge.
Okay, so I've got the top done. I've got this right leg done with two coats. I'm gonna continue on all the way around the rim and finish off the legs. And then I think all that's really gonna to need to be done is just another second coat on the top here. And um, we'll see, it might need three coats. I'm now ready to start the stool seat. And what I'm doing is I'm masking off a diamond pattern. So I've marked the center of each of these sides and I've just got a pencil mark here on some green tape. Now I'm taking some tape, I'm lining up between the two marks and I'm using the ruler as a straight edge to guide the line so that it's perfectly straight. Sometimes this tape tends to stretch and so you might notice that if you try to go from edge to edge, you'll sometimes get a wavy line. So I'm masking to the inside of this because I'm leaving this brown and I'm gonna be painting these four quadrants. Now I have my piece again on the Lazy Susan so that it's easy to turn it around and then again line up my marks I'll put my weight on there and line up between the two marks and then ensure that I'm just right along the straight edge of that ruler and then burnish it down So I don't know if you can see this, but my mark is there and there. So I've just intersected between the two. So what I'll end up doing is coming along and just cutting. Actually, I don't want to use an X-Acto knife because I don't want to go through the vinyl. So I'm going to make a mark. And then what I'll be doing is lifting the tape. So I'm going to come along with my scissors. I'm going to lift the tape, I'll cut along that line, actually this I can cut shorter because my edge is right there, but this one I want to be bang on. So I'm just going to take the scissors and come right along. And then burnish it down again. Now, this has a texture, this vinyl. I don't know if it shows on camera. But you want to burnish it really, really, really well. Press it right in. So again, lining up between my two marks. going to use my vintage iron as a weight. Take the tape, want to line up. And again, I'm going to take my pencil and mark that edge so that I can cut it away. Now this edge, since it overlaps again, you can just peel it right back and you can cut it short. And again, I'm going to peel this back and I'm going to cut right along my pencil line. burnish it down really well. And I'm on the last one, line up on my mark, add the 
iron. Make sure you're still in your marks. Take the tape. Just use that edge. Just ensure that you're burnishing the outer edge really well because that's where my paint is going to be up against. And again, I'll just mark where I need to cut that tape. Remove the pieces that you used to mark. That's no longer needed. Okay, so I'm just gonna clean this up and finish cutting and then we're gonna be ready to paint. Before I start painting, I'm going to put the seat up onto these paint pyramids so I can raise the ledge. So I'm just gonna pop these under. And that way I can get right to the bottom edge with the paintbrush. For the seat, once again, I'm using Dixie Belle chalk mineral paint in a color called Driftwood. So here we go. I'm gonna offload in the middle of the seat and then I'll come back and brush from the tape onto the work. Now if you're not comfortable with painting so close to the tape, you can cover the center too, because we don't want to paint over that. Okay, so I'm gonna end it here, guys. Um, my husband just walked in the door. Okay, we're on the last quadrant here. And again, I'm offloading the majority of the paint away from my taped line. And then I'm coming back And I'm brushing from the tape towards the edge. And that should help with paint bleed. Hopefully I get a nice crisp line. I just dampen the paintbrush, I can get right into all these nooks and crannies here. Just want to be sure that you're covering all of the brown and you can stipple into it. Just a touch more. Okay, as you can see, the Lazy Susan is amazing for getting right to the edge and those paint pyramids really help. I've gotten right into the corners here. There's no brown showing on the folds of the fabric. So I'm gonna let this dry and I'm gonna come back and do a second coat. Time to peel the tape to see what we've got. beautiful crisp line. When you're peeling back tape, 
try to do it at a 45 degree angle and pull towards you so that you don't accidentally take any of the paint out. Can't wait to see it on top of the stool. Two more steps on the stool and then it's done. I'm going to be applying some gemstone mousse to the um, leg tips here because they are pretty dark and tarnished. So let me just zoom in on this and I'll demonstrate on one of these legs. Okay, so I've taped up over the paint and now I can remove the tape that's covering the tip, the metal tip here. And this pull tab that I created makes it really easy just to grab it and get it off. So the tape that I applied here, I applied in two pieces and that's because the leg tapers and it's difficult to get it around smoothly without having to wrinkle it. So I find that two pieces does a better job of that. So I'm just gonna burnish that well. So I've got a little bit of the mousse on the tip of this makeup applicator and I'm just gonna spread it all over Now, once it's on, I'm going to take my finger and I'm just going to swirl it. And that will just blend it right onto the metal. And this mousse is very, very creamy. And it's water-based, so it just washes right off your finger with water. Now I'm going for a realistic kind of tarnished brass look here, but I want to even out the brass that's currently on there. So this is doing a beautiful job of just evening out all those tones. Okay, so that one's done. So here's a leg that I haven't done yet. I'm going to use my pull tab idea just to pull back on that tape to take it off. Now I hope you can see this, but the tone and the tarnish is just really uneven. I'm going to swing over to one that I've just done with the mousse. Hopefully that'll focus. focus. But as you can see, it's got a more even tone and it just sort of evens that out, but it doesn't take away from the brassy look that I'm going for. So I'm just gonna finish off with the mousse on that last leg tip. Because I could use a third coat of pink on this stool, we're actually gonna be showing you how to spray chalk paint too. And we're just taping up the inside of the stool here to prevent overspray. So we just have a piece of cardboard here. And we've already taped around the brass tips on the legs. So when you're spray painting, there's more prep because you have overspray. When you're brushing, it's not as critical. There, that's all covered now. The bottom of the legs are covered. It's ready for paint. So we're going to mix up some chalk paint with some Floetrol and a bit of water and we're going to put it into this cup gun to spray. So we'll show you that in just a moment. We're just mixing with some water and Floetrol here and now we're pouring into a paint strainer before we um, put it into the cup. Just want to be sure there's nothing in there that could clog the paint gun. As you can see it's streaming through really well so that means it'll be fine for the paint gun to spray. So we're just going to let that strain and then we're ready to spray. First lean the chair forward so that you could get the inside of the legs. Then we're going to flip it around and we're going to do exactly the same thing to the two opposite inside legs.
Once that's done, you can then start to go around each leg and then you can come up and do the rim of the chair. Make sure you get the top and then continue spraying the next leg. As you can see, it's pretty methodical. Keep your wrist straight as you spray. It's all in the arm motion. That way you get nice, even coverage. Now one more pass on the top of the rim and that'll ensure you have an even coat. Don't forget to come back and graffiti an S onto the cardboard. Now that the peony chalk paint is dry, we're going to be applying the clear satin by Dixie Belle. Again, we're going to be putting it through our paint gun, but before we do that, we're going to strain it as we did our paint. So we're just stirring our clear coat satin before we pour it through our paint strainer. We've got a 226 micron paint strainer here and fingers crossed that it goes through. We're not quite sure. There are different sizes and there are coarse holes and finer holes. It's a medium. So we've got a 226 micron paint strainer here. As you can see, it's coming through. And we've got, um, I think, a 2.2 millimeter nozzle on our paint sprayer. Yeah. We're gonna be spraying it onto this scrap of wood just to make sure that we have flow. Okay, here we go, we're doing our test. It is coming through. Yeah, yeah, I'm happy with that. The process of spraying the clear coat is exactly the same as we did for the spray paint. You're just gonna lean the chair forward and get the back of the legs, the insides, and then you're gonna rotate it and do the same on the opposite side. Now it's just a matter of coming around the outside of the legs and then coming up to the rim and doing the top. 